नेपाल वायु सेवा निगम राष्ट्रीय ध्वजावाहक अब नेपाल भरी को लागि 24 घंटा व्हीकल बुक करना स्पार्क कार को सर्विस लाई समझने वाले विद इस थ्री अमेजिंग ऑप्शंस स्पार्क कार स्पार्क ड्राइवर सेल्फ ड्राइव नेपाल स्पार्क कार तपाईं को यात्रा को सहायता Red Garment, order your choice. Shilaji, welcome to Nepal. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Pleasure is all mine. Another heaven. You've been here before, haven't you? Yes, uh, a long time back. Okay. In '84. A short period of time. Were you here? Two days. Only two days. Yes. Do you have some memory of this place? Uh, yes, I have memory of backward um, r region, very shy. Right. Shy people. Shy people, shy um, nature, taking care of them in a shy way. Right. And uh, I felt today when I am here, it has opened up so bright and bright. I found the city so clean. I found people so warm and so a not welcoming shy no not shy <laughs> not shy totally not and what brought you here in 84 uh, 84 i was passing through uh, asia right and uh, it was airport break okay. just to rest so you just you came on your own is it uh, i came i was doing Pagwan's work and we have uh, here some um, commune. Uh, did you have a Rajneesh co commune here in, in, in the 80s? Yes, in 80s. And um, I came to visit them. When I come here, I have to go visit, right. representing Bhagwan. So you, at, by then you were already a sannyasin? I was already sannyasin. I was already Bhagwan's secretary. And I was already in Oregon. Interesting. I mean, but you were born in, you said, in, in Baroda, is it? That's right. So you went to school in Baroda. You studied there till you were, what, 16 years old? Right. And then you decided to go to States for further studies. Right. Up to that point, Rajneesh was not in the picture. Only once. Oh, okay. And that was, Bhagwan was passing through Baroda. Right. And Bhagwan uh, gave a discourse there, and my father told us we are all going to go listen to his discourse today. And I don't know what happened to me. I did not understand. I could not define it. I was a young girl protected by parents. It took me five years, but constantly I would have uh, thoughts about him when I was studying in U.S. And my father was always sending us books of Bhagwan. Okay. So when was the first encounter? 16 year old. When you were 16 year old? Yeah. Your parents took you to... Right. Where the Rajneesh was giving a discourse. Right. This was probably before the commune was established in Pune, much before. Before even... Uh, uh, Bom Bhagwan was not in Bombay then either. Right. He was uh, at that time a beginner. He went under the heading of uh, Acharya Rajneesh. Acharya Rajneesh. So what was the first encounter like? He passed by me. Okay. And I was like... And you were one in the group there? Uh, I, we were sitting like this in the auditorium. And I was on an aisle seat. And when he passed by... 
was the best. It was the, white the Russian sort of thing. Uh, whiff of this uh, fragrance. But I, you know, you're too young to. In those days, pe uh, youngsters were not as open, open and understanding, and so it was kind of magical. Just it was absolute magic. You were not able to identify what kind of feelings. You were no, going no. But I identified when I was 21. Came to visit my parents from U.S. When I met Bhagwan, that was it. I knew my path in my life. So it's interesting, Silaji, just that one encounter and kind of mesmerized you. And I don't know if it was mesmerism. Okay. But it but something it, that it you felt. It turned my inside out in a placed me in the right place. Right. But after that you went to States and then Yeah. But the thought was there was still the thought about him in your head. Right. Around, and, uh, but I didn't leave him. After this meeting, yeah. um, it was, I can't go from here. I said to my father, I'm not going back to U.S. Oh, on that first discourse that you were attending. Uh, that's right. That in uh, Baroda? Uh, no, no, this is in Bombay now. Okay. Oh, yeah. We are in Bombay. And I just was drawn to him. I started doing little chores for him, and then I became part of his first experiment of six people in a, a commune setting, living together. And one thing led to another. And For the sake of camera, tell me about uh what went in your head after the first encounter you flew to U.S. for your studies? And then um, uh, you wanted to know more about him? Uh, not even that. Okay. But somehow it turned my feelings upside down. I couldn't decide what was happening. I would be in the middle of work any type of work or my artwork or whatever and suddenly I would freeze and I would say what's going on? So your mind was constantly preoccupied, preoccupied. with his thoughts and everything. Right. And uh, did you like, did, did you follow him up? Did you study more about him? Did you? No. Nothing. I, I was studying what my father was sending me, his pamphlets and books. But they were just a reading without putting two and two together. It was very clear when I met him second time with my father. This cannot go on. Second time was when you... In Bombay. You, you came from U.S. Back. Because your mother was sick. Exactly. And then your parents took you to Mumbai uh, for your mother's sickness, was it, was it? No, my father had some work. My mother remained at home. She okay. could not travel because she should not have this dust. This was after how many years? Five years. Five years. So five years after the first encounter, you came back to India again because your mother was sick and then your father took you to Mumbai. Same day. Same day? Yeah. And this was, was it purposely, this, this trip was purposely designed to go and meet him there or? No, no, okay. no, no. It was my desire. While I and my father were talking about on our journey, and then I said to my father, can we see this man, Acharya Rajneesh? Because last time, uh, father had taken me there. Yeah. So he says, he yes. Meeting encounter. Yeah. And that's what happened. And then I kept just being drawn into these feelings. And I go to Pakwan and I said, what are you doing to me? The second time you met him? Yeah. yeah. After that. Okay. I say, I can't sleep. I can't eat. 
I meet old people, young people, I only talk about you. What is happening? What did he say? He laughed, smiled, and as I'm talking to you, I see that laughter, I, I hear that laughter, I see that smile. And he says, Sila, that is because you are in love with me. Pause, and then he says, and I'm in love with you. Now, when you say love, uh, can you explain me that? Is love, in a sense, what, like male-female love, is it? Or no. What, what kind of love is that? There's nothing to explain. It uh, is a feeling that dictated my life. It is a feeling from which I function. It is a feeling I'm ready to take any risk. Obsession. Which energized you or, always. or distracted you? Always. Energized you. Right. I can tell you an incident. We were in Rajnishpuram, constructing Rajnishpuram. Bhagwan was cut off with a one spring, flowing spring, and it was winter time, it broke the dam. So Bhagwan was on this side and I was on this side. He's having a toothache. He wants to see me. Sends me message, Sila, come see me. Did he live on his own? With his caretakers. Okay. Yeah. I had my own house where I lived. He had his own house. And I say to my work team, what do we do, guys? Do I venture to this heavy flowing? They said, no, we'll tie you down almost if you plan something. It took me two and a half hours to go through the mountain road on Bhagwan's side of the... It was not possible to cross the road? No, you could not. Normally you could, but this... Was it flooded? Yes, it, was, it broke the dam. It really flooded? Yeah. And you had to go... On the other side. It took me two and a half hours. I got on a horse, which I had not done since I was a child right. and one meter terrain through the mountains I went in the meet Bhagwan and I said what can I do he says I have a toothache I broke out laughing it was so dangerous passage I that just for a toothache, but that was the madness I had. Right. Wanting to what, take care of him? or wanting to, wanting to take care of him, relieve him of his pain, and his command was but my... At the same time, you wanted to take care of him, but at the same time, you probably also would want him to protect you in some, some ways. No. Were you looking for a protection? No, I wasn't even thinking of protection. I wasn't, I didn't even know this hard terrain that I went through. No, but what I'm trying to get at is that without him, maybe in life you felt unprotected? Like you were No, uh, uh, not complete content. Word is content. There was discontentment. Because of I, was, being I was thinking that, you know, in some ways, human beings are constantly looking, whether they know it or not, for some kind of protection in their life. Because, and, you know, if it really comes to that, most of us feel very vulnerable in it. A protection of someone, like when we were children, maybe protection of parents, 
later in life, some people take protections from religion, take protection from certain ideology. But in one way or the other, it could be their own moral values. But some sense of protection human being is constantly seeking, was that? Uh, was no, I felt the hole in me. And when I met Bhagwan, that hole was full. But why was the hole there? In the first place? That's why I call it love. This whole feeling, this whole experience was feeling whole, complete. So, without him, did you feel incomplete as a human being? I would assume that because this idea of a whole and f feeling completion it's not an idea, it is an experience that I felt. But that is also like uh, putting too much of uh, dependence on other people for your life. Call it what you want, but that was my reality. But I know you, this, this reality... But the, that reality, could you take it as weakness in some way? Yeah? Could be. As a human being? Absolutely, it can be a weakness, but why today, at the age of 75, I cannot take it as a weakness because it became a positive source of being. It became an event in life that you cannot just drop it by giving it definitions or form but, to it. But when you lost him, was it was it difficult for you to cope up with life? No, terms no, life? that is ex exactly where I'm coming now. Right. Love is a force, motivating force. But love also creates a lot of dependency, doesn't it? An attachment. When it is attached with material situation. For me, love was always my base. And when I felt something difficulties, that love restored my strength. But the love that you're talking about right now is a very special love, isn't it? It's not Oh, it's I wouldn't not male, know. female, it's not no, family no, member. No, no, nothing. It's not brother and sister, no, it's not friend. It's, no. it's something way above that. M much way about that, that and differentiation uh, comes with it. It is forward pushing feeling. Love was not my weakness. Love was my strength. And it is this strength that allows me to go through each good, beautiful, hard, difficult situation without any uh, big thought in it. It's like Dashrath invites me here. At my age, I don't think about my flight this oh yeah I will be there why because I'll have opportunity to talk of Bhagwan right it is I will be able to partake some more things that I have learned from him so do you feel now that I mean if you hadn't met him if he was not in your life your life would not have been the way it is right now I'm sure it would not be. You would feel the emptiness in life or...? Probably, probably. Uh, to feel this emptiness or to work with it, then I was too young. As a young person, how, how, how much control did you have of your life? 
after I met Book One, complete. But that dependence was there. No, not dependency. I cannot. No, the reason why I'm saying mm -hmm. this is, you know, I I try to lead my life as unattached as possible. Um, my personal philosophy has been that you're basically solo in life. Uh, cushions are nice, but they're not there for you all the time and permanently, so you've got to learn to live your life on your own terms and on your own ways. Friends are nice, loving relatives are nice, loving pa partners are nice, uh, but it, when it comes to dealing the real issues of life, then one is solo. So, the way I try to lead my life is being very unattached and self-dependent. I take good things from all sources, including Rajni's, okay. it's known as Osho now. I don't know if that, do you agree with that? For me, he's king of my heart. Yeah. He's book one. So the way I lead my life is I take good things from all sources, you know, including Rajni's, mm -hmm. including other philosophies, which can sort of deal with my you know, as a human being, what we have in living in the modern world is that you have social problems, you have economical problems, and then you have psychological problems, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Definitely, without it. And, and, and whatever information that you're looking from various sources is to find out whether it helps you to deal with all these social, economical, psychological, which also includes physical problems, you know, we think about how to keep ourselves physically fit, how to keep our mind alert, how to keep our mind, you know, fit, mentally fit, and then spiritually fit, fit. and then there's a the practical side of the life, which is the economical side, the professional side, you know. So that's my philosophy. So I, what I wanted to know was that, um, you know, when you give yourself so much to one source, are you not sort of like showing weakness as a person? No. On the contrary. Not On being the, able to deal with your own life? It, that's it, exactly. I was always practical with intuition and base was love. And this similarity of love, I can say I have seen in my parents. I live my life with a circle of triangle, over the triangle, that's mother, father, Bhagwan. And that makes my circle complete. Intuition is a big part where people become but is uh, that dependent. Is that circle still complete without them in your life right now? Yes, now I live with, without all three of them. Yeah, your parents are not around. For the last uh, 30 years almost. Your parents are not around. Yeah. And I go through life in all practicality. My work requires a lot of practicality, a lot of uh, organization, etc. My profession is in healthcare. I work with mental issues, with uh, heavy schizophrenia, borderline, dangerous aggression. Uh, suicidal people and there you require certain yeah. structure, certain clarity and dedication dedication. and dedication. dedication. Tell me about, I mean you, you've known Rajneesh so closely, lived with him for a number of years, different circumstances, different situations. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
different sides of life. Uh, did he have any weakness as a human being? Was there any His weakness? weakness? Yes, as a human being. I mean, after all, I mean, he is a human being, wasn't he? So, yeah, did, did uh, he have any weakness as such? If he had any weakness, that is his knowledge. Okay, so... Um, what was his strength was his weakness, is it? Is that what you're trying to tell <laughs> Pretty much, pretty much. Um, for so many years, he was a scholar. And he was a demanding man. I say demanding man, he never learned to accept no because of his knowledge. In, in his, uh, f the way I understood his knowledge is he saw totally different dimensions than maybe you and I will see from a situation. And so accurately, he was a man of immense analysis. And this ability to analyze distance makes a distance. You said he didn't take no for an answer. That's right. Which means that he was obsessed of wanting things to be on his own terms all the time? At times. Normally he doesn't bother. He gives a concept. When we created commune, he gave us a concept what he wants or how he wants or what is his purpose of this concept. And he would analyze and explain to me to a detail. For example, in Pune, people were living, his sannyasins were living not in good condition because the residential possibilities were small it became a necessity to create a commune. Then what should you have in commune? So different aspects. It should be beautiful, na natural, lot of good air. These are a few basic concepts. Should have electricity, um, etc. But you know, there's one thing but, about... Yeah, please. Sorry. Uh, I just finished no, the please, thought. Sorry. He never said that each house should be offering each individual the uh, beauty of the nature. It was then my part to put those practicalities together. It's not just that we create a paradise for Bhagwan, but we create the paradise for all, all involved in this matter. Or right now, my handicapped people are also living in paradise. I don't think of me or Bhagwan in that moment, first create an environment, where we can take care of them. So we were a good combination in that sense. He had the concept, I could translate it in practicality. Yeah, but there's one thing, uh, living in the commune and dealing with the people in the commune who are your followers, who are, uh, you know, in awe of you, and uh, they all want to please you like yourself. But how was he uh, with people who contradicted him or did not agree with his ways? How it, did it, he deal with that? It was very simple. Was he impatient? Was he angry? Was no. he still adamant that it has to be his own way? Because No, you come out of your freedom. You were not forced to come to us. Not only that, there was no proselytizing going on by organization. We made available the books, tapes, 
you read it and if you come on your own, then be ready to follow the structure here, which is what we do in normal lives also. You live in a country, you follow the structure and then move forward. So what kind of, what kind of uh, philosophy did he preach? Because he uh, professed not to be any, follow any religion or any religious doctrine. Uh, he sort of uh, believed in letting people do more or less what they want and then to come in terms with themselves. Uh, how do you feel about this? How do you, is, is that a practical way of living? He was a worshipper of freedom, freedom of thought, freedom of being, freedom in all manners without hurting the other. But do you believe that ultimate freedom is possible as a human being living in a society? Well, it depends what you're seeking in society. I have no arguments with anybody anymore. I live my life in my freedom in structure of my own house. Is that possible for every single human being? It depends choice. what your choices are. If you're looking for security... Can every single human being in this planet make that kind of choice? And you have to be clear about that those choice choices. Seems also seems very luxurious to some, doesn't it? <laughs> it is. And when you choice. have made your choice and you accept your choice, then you don't shy away from difficult moment. Then you go through the difficult moment, take, you take responsibility. Freedom without responsibility is not possible. And you have to, what happens in normal world... But, but when you become responsible, doesn't that curtail some of your freedom? Yeah, it may curtail, for example, here, if I want to behave like a dog, they won't allow me. But it's my choice to be here or not. Not only that, like if you have, like let's say you are a mother, and if you want to be a responsible mother, that might curtail uh, some of the freedom that you want to practice as a person, or some of the ways that, the ways that you would want to live uh, your life had you not been responsible for a child. So, it, 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 and, and there can be so many other responsibilities. It can be of the child, it can be of the society, it can be of your profession, it can be of uh, whatever you're doing as a, as a profession in your life. So all that kind of uh, responsibility does curtail all kinds of freedom. That's why Bhagwan says, step out of it. Yeah, but is that possible for everybody to live? I am living the life. I have accepted the consequences. And I still live within the structure that works for me. So tell me, what was the structure of uh, the first ashram in Pune? Beautiful. It was there Bhagwan introduced his ideology of communal lifestyle. And it was enriching. And what was the economy side of that lifestyle and the Economy, he was having many Westerners coming there. The people he attracted were highly intellectuals with profession. They were on vacation. For them, spirituality became uh, entertainment, so some came with the entertaining values, some were like me who just didn't know why I'm there, but that's the place was registered what, for what me. If, what if someone without the profession that you talk about, the skill that you talk about, someone bereft of that still wants to lead a life which is full of freedom, this. How is that? How is it possible for them? No, it's not possible. 
you got to be responsible for yourself and you have to take the consequences. So you cannot have the cake and eat it too. But there can be a person who is born with maybe a... There were a number of people, but if they wanted like to be part of this uh, commune. commune, then they had to follow the commune rules. And they were easy rules. They were not rules that were uh, anything uh, so what did to negate. So offer to a person who simply wanted to be away from the hustle bustle of life and wanted to lead a life of happiness and satisfaction, uh, but didn't have any qualification of such or hadn't had any profession as such and just wanted to be part of the ashram and be happy in a way. When you come, you should know your choices. If you want to be part of the commune, then you follow the structure of the commune. If you don't have money, but you have skills, you use as a form of bartering. You contribute in some, some ways. Okay. You, right, because commune cannot be burdened. Right, right. It is pretty much the same regulation at a different plateau. But then what's the difference from the outside life? Nothing. And that's exactly what Bhagwan teaches us. Be in bazaar and feel the meditation. But some people don't want to feel the meditation they want to show the public how meditative they are, then you won't be fulfilled. It depends on your need. You cut out your need for you to function in freedom. And was his intention to have the whole humanity living in this world? Was that his intention? With everybody wants to have contentment. Everybody wants to feel at peace within themselves. He offers us this program for that. So you say if you are living in a commune and leading a life like that, that you wouldn't have any emotional disturbances in life? I don't. Yeah? Yeah, I'm living for 33 years since the day I left prison and started to build myself up again. 24 hours and earlier years I didn't travel because I had no means. I created my own means and I'm living with my people same as they are. I call myself patient number one because somewhere we all have deficit of one sort or the another. We, what about when you lived in the commune, in, 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 like in Pune or in, even in Oregon? We'll get to that a little later. Amongst the sannyasins, was there any emotional conflict as such, or were they all living in a very blissful state, stays alive? I don't remember um, st stress pass of emotions. You can have that stress of emotion, but then go to therapy group and verbalize or put out your aggression on the pillow. But among ourselves, no, because the basic desires we had were pretty much similar. We felt completely energized near Bhagwan. But there definitely must have been some sort of hierarchy. That you need to have. And hierarchy creates ego, doesn't it? Even before it creates new egos, we all have egos. And once you have egos, all sorts of other emotions come. So then you go to therapy anger, group. <laughs> then you go to therapy group. So no. what, did, what, what happened to the Pune Ashram? Why it, it didn't work out there? Or no, there was no space. Okay. People were getting sick because of the... Uh, they were living in, in Jupat Pattis. Mm -hmm. 
unhealthy environment. And every day, thousands of people were coming to see Bhagwan. So it was a necessity. Did you have any problem with the local authorities as such? Not that I know. And if they had it, who doesn't in the world? Everybody has it. Did the authority wanted you to vacate the place? Or no, 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 no. They were our or properties. That was your property? Yeah, they were uh, properties of Radni Shashram. What made you decide to go to Oregon? Just the moment uh, we couldn't find a place six years. And one day Bhagwan mentions this. And I said, why don't we go to US? Because I was living there. Right. And um, I had some idea of practicalities there. So wanting to move out of Pune was in the pipeline for us at a certain period. Right. And then you suggested US? Yeah, so he looks at me and he says, Sila, you have two months. Find me a place in two months. In US? In US. US is a big country. I mean, how did you... How did it, you uh, then I had... Oregon. Yeah. We uh, contacted the um, real estate people. And I, every day, he was cutting my days, making it shorter. Okay. You have this many days left. Yeah. And when I went to look for land, I was given seven days. To find the land? Find the land, for, yes. finish the contract. Did he specify, like, we want this much of land? Or? No. He, he gave me the outline of what kind of commune problem. has to right. have in it, how the infrastructure should be. Okay. But he, he already had that in his mind. Obviously, I didn't have it, mm. and I could only function when he gives me an idea of which direction I have to go. So how did you find Oregon? Uh, it's so far. Um, uh, accident. Or plan of existence. Who knows? But found a beautiful land. Mm -hmm. Which was for sale, was it? We, which was for sale. It was a graceland for sale. Belonged to a person or was it? Uh, to a person. Okay. One Texan family. So it basically bought that whole area. It was substantially very big. Uh, well, it? It, that whole area was a one package. We could not cut it. Right. So you had to take the package or look for something else. It was the size and of a, of a, of a my days were running out because just traveling from one end to other and day is over. So when you decide, once you bought that land, how long did it take you to sort of like develop it? And we it started developing immediately. The first five people came the third week after purchase of a hood. Uh, land. And um, I had negotiated in such a way that we can occupy the land before all the paperwork is. And the finances was not a problem? Of course. Okay. Uh, near book one finance is always a problem because he spends it before uh, finances come in. <laughs> <laughs> the is day because he's so sure that it will come in? I, I assume. Sources? I assume. Would you call him a materialistic man? That's, why not? He should have fun. For the work he did for thousands of people so to, to speak for so many years and look at us. So you, you think in order to have fun in life and to be happy in life, you need material things? For me, not. But maybe oh. for him. I can live as a pauper too. Oh, but which means that your 
outlook on life and his kind of defers? Definitely, we are two individuals. What is the common thing then? Love. Just love? Just love. And love overlooks all Over everything. Misunderstanding, misunderstanding. No, that, that is life. You Part can, uh, life. it's like you write it off as life. So in spite of being his follower, you could have a completely different way to look at life and he has a completely different way. Why not? And he encourages that also. But how does his, how does his uh, philosophy help you? It helps me. You see me how I am. I have easier work because I take what I need to do. I'm a practical person and his high philosophy doesn't work in my practical lifestyle. Then I would make a choice otherwise. I'm very clear about my choices. Did you ever had um, a front conflict with uh, Rajanis? That's when I left. But was it the last straw on the camel's back or was it something um, was No, not in camel's back. It was a last straw for me to continue to work under those circumstances because I took my work seriously. Work meaning building what, uh, Rajanis Puran? Being his secretary building, non-building, maintaining the commune, all that was my responsibility. I remember, you know, I, was, I, I haven't really uh, uh, looked into too much of depth about all of Rajinish's life, but just last night I was seeing Wild Wild Country a little bit, and somewhere he mentioned that People around him were turning his meditative commune to a fascist holocaust or something like that. What did he mean by that? You have to ask him because I don't listen to him when he talks like that. I go to sleep. I mean, you have so much of contradictions and conflicts with him and at the same time you worship him like no other person in this world. I have not any conflict with him. That's what I want to explain to you. My conflict was with myself. And this conflict comes because I took my work and its responsibility seriously. He had given me responsibility of protecting him, then protecting his commune and protecting his teachings. The people he was living with in his house, these people were experimenting with drugs on him. When I found out... On him. Oregon. On him. On him. On him. And for me, he needed protection then. I go, I confront him. Were you ever into drugs? No. No. Never. Not of any sort? Never. And I go to him, explain to him, Bhagwan, your teachings says intoxication of any kind is detrimental to your spiritual growth. So what do I see, say? I said, leave that spirituality out of it. But government, when they recognize, they will shut us down. That is their biggest uh, policy yeah. a policy that's what they have done all this so life you found him deviating from his path hmm? did you find him deviating from his track uh deviating no maybe bored his mission was complete he probably saw how much responsibility was there and i was taking and maybe he said I don't need it, meaning he doesn't need it. Would you, would you take that as a, as a cue that uh, maybe that kind of philosophy doesn't work in practical life? Because people do have their weaknesses of one thing or the other. What clue I take? what you take. tell me right now is I would consider that as his weaknesses. 
my clue is make your choices clear a beautiful story from Bhagwan. he often told us this story a samurai comes to a zen master and he wants to know about the truth zen master starts abusing the samurai samurai pulls his sword out stops one second puts his sword back zen master says here is your answer here opens the gates of heaven if he would have cut the head with there would have been gates of hell gates of hell yeah, yeah. So choice is in our hand. We cannot put a responsibility on other person. And I do not. And for me, that's plenty. Plenty work to maintain myself that I take my responsibilities. I mean, you know Rosny so closely. So do you think towards the end that he, he went wrong? I wasn't there. It would be wrong for me to give you answer. Um, but I would assume that his then advisors were there with their own personal interest. So when you say you were not there, were you like were you completely divorced from him for a period of Com time? I was gone. You were not there when That was my strength that I walked away. Were you around him when he passed away? No. Oh. I was in France. I had just come out of prison trying to sort out my life. So what, what went wrong in Oregon that got you into trouble? That happens everywhere in the world. Not if you're careful. You can never be careful when politicians are involved. Yeah, but what, what really went wrong? What really went wrong? That a woman yeah. who is not involved in Judeo-Christian values, a man, her leader, is not involved with that, and flaunting his power. Nobody likes it. The U.S. is a place where there's a freedom of religious practice. They say they are, they are practicing it, but you see the result of it. Trump is trying to burn the, destroy the Constitution. So if you look at their policies now, they're going back to Middle Ages. Women should have no individual powers, gay should not have it, transgender shouldn't have it, this shouldn't have it, black shouldn't have it. It goes on and on. True, let's, let's not get into the complications of politics. Of <laughs> I agree. Can we make a break? Yeah, yeah. How did Rajneesh become Osho? That I don't know, I wasn't there. But you don't know that? No, I was already gone. My assessment is, he tried to separate himself from the scandals in the moment were erupting with his own anger. Maybe the reason that name change. He applied the same method for himself that he applied for us sannyasins, where he, you get a new name to break your identity with your past. Who knows? When you're traveling, do you go to these Osho ashrams? No, I haven't been to. Why? I let Bhagwan. What is his ashram for me? Nothing. But time to time some curious people come, then I treat like every other visitor. But you still consider yourself as his secretary in one way or the other? Definitely. You haven't left Bhagwan completely. I have no intention of leaving him. 
Sheila, it's so, so nice meeting you. Such a pleasure. Same here. Thank you for I would recommend to you, read my autobiography, uh, Don't Kill Him. And there is a second part to that autobiography. It's available in the bookstores in the US? Amazon. Oh, Amazon, okay. Um, it's both Indian publication, Penguin Books, as my three-year back book uh, done it. Uh, by my own rules mm -hmm. that may give you insight in sure. to I'll how I think. To, I'm flying to US this evening and uh, once I'm there I will definitely order your book. Oh good. I will do that and you know hopefully we'll meet uh, again somewhere sometime. I tell you the, uh, <laughs> if that happens Dashrath is the fault. Yeah. I give him the responsibility. And if I ever happen to be in Switzerland, I'll, I'll definitely check you out. Absolutely, without hesitation. And you just need to connect so I'm not out of the country during that time or so. So, Sheila, you have a wonderful life. Wonderful life. Should we shake hands? You too, yeah. young man, and remain young. Pleasure. <laughs> I will.